Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will look at VPC components. So VPC networking components. So what do we have? We have subnets, we have internet gateway, route table, security group, NACL, DSCP option set, NAT gateway, egress only network gateways, elastic IP addresses, VPC endpoints, VPC peering. Now, out of all these, the security group and NACL pretty much provide you the functionality of a firewall. They will have some rules in place and they will um, review every packet. That means every packet that is coming in is subjected to the rules and restrictions in security group and NACL. We'll talk more about where these security groups are applied and also the NACL when we discuss uh, practically while we are doing this and building VPC. Subnet. So what is a subnet? In networking, you take a networking address and split that mathematically into multiple portions or manageable chunks that each chunk is referred to as a subnet. So when it comes to AWS VPC, what you do is you take the cellular block of the VPC and split that into small portions or small chunks and the chunk is referred to as a subnet and we'll do that practically in one of the videos and i'll show you how you can take a cyber block and create subnets out of it next internet gateway so internet gateway is a virtual device that is provided by aws which is horizontally scaled redundant and highly available and which provides internet to your VPC. Without Internet Gateway, none of the components within your VPC will have access to the Internet. Next, Route Table. Route Table is nothing but a route table that people talk about when configuring your Cisco networking devices or you know routers or any kind of router, right? You know, it, it requires or it needs routing tables or routes. What we do is to route traffic to the internet or to route traffic to another subnet within the VPC, you will have to add appropriate routes in the routing table and you use the routing table to you know, attach it to your subnet so appropriate routes are in place to route the traffic and we will look into this practically when we you know, design our VPC. Next, security group. The security group acts like a firewall for your instance to control inbound and outbound traffic. When I say instance, I'm referring to a virtual machine or EC2 instance. So you can also apply this to other components and we'll see that. So this is the security group and you have to have to apply it to your components. Next, NACL, Network Access Control List. This is an optional security that you can apply at the subnet level. So before a packet gets into your uh, EC2 instance, it has to get into the uh, subnet after routing the packet into the subnet. And at the subnet level, you control the traffic using NACL. Next, DHCP option set. So this thing provides you the services of DHCP. So automatic address assignment to the systems that are coming up within your subnet. So this is what uh, that does the magic for you. Next, NAT gateway. So the NAT gateway is used to provide internet to your private subnet. Now I know you are. You must be wondering what this private subnet is. So when you uh, create subnets within your VPC, if you choose to provide internet to a subnet, it is referred as public subnet. And if you choose not to provide internet to your subnet, it is referred as private subnet. But what if the components within your um, subnet wants to access internet let's say to download security patches, but does not want anyone from internet access the components. That is where NAT gateway comes handy. So if you were to read this, you can use a network address 
translation gateway to enable instances in a private subnet to connect to the internet or other AWS services but prevent the internet from initiating a connection with these instances. Egress only internet gateway. This is similar to NAT gateway. NAT gateway is used for IPv6 instances and egress only internet gateway is used for IPv6 instances. So an egress only internet gateway is a horizontally scaled redundant and highly available VPC component that allows outbound communication over IPv6 from instances in your VPC to the internet and prevent the internet from initiating an IPv6 connection with your instances. Next, Elastic IP Addresses. An Elastic IP address is a static IPv6 address designed for dynamic cloud computing. An Elastic IP address is associated with your AWS account. So what is Elastic thing in this IP address? So what it means is if you have an IP address, I mean to say if you have an elastic IP address, you can assign to, let's say, the first EC2 instance for, for whatever reason, if that dies or something happens, then you can take that IP address and assign it to another EC2 instance. So with an elastic IP address, you can mask the failure of an instance or the software by rapidly remapping the address to another instance in your account. Next, VPC endpoints. A VPC endpoint enables you to privately connect your VPC to supported AWS services. VPC endpoint services powered by private link without requiring an internet gateway, a NAT device, VPN connection or AWS direct connection. What this really translates to or mean is that uh, when you communicate with any resource or service that has a VPC endpoint, your traffic never leaves the AWS network. It is within the AWS network and it will never hit the internet. That's the beauty of VPC endpoint. Next, VPC peering. So what is this? A VPC peering connection is a networking component between two VPCs that enables you to route traffic between them using private IPv4 addresses or IPv6 addresses. Instances in either VPC can communicate with each other as if they were within the same network. So what does this exactly mean? Say uh, within my account I have VPC1 and VPC2. That means I have two uh, server block addresses. So I can have uh, VPC peering between them so they can you know communicate with each other not just that you can establish a VPC peering connection from one account to another account meaning not between accounts but between VPCs meaning from my VPC say for example to your VPC it's not automatic I will have to initiate the connection you'll have to approve the connection and there are other requirements meaning the that there should not be an overlap side or blocks between these uh, VPCs as well. You know, we will, when we practically do this, you will get a hang of what I'm talking about. But for now, it is good enough to understand that VPC peering is we are establishing a connection, a communication between two VPCs. Well, guys, that's it in this video. I kind of went through different VPC components. I know it was a rush. Uh, feel free to you know kind of watch this one more time to get a hang of what this each component is, what it does. Don't worry about the practicality of it. When we create um, VPC and design it ourselves, we will pretty much go through almost every component that we talked here, at least most of them. Well, guys, that's it in this video. I'll see you in the next.